Hey YouTube, this is the unboxing, setup, and testing of a cheap wood lathe. These are much simpler than their metal cutting counterparts, so there isn't much to be included. However, it did come with a large Allen wrench for the bed extension mounting area cover plate, a medium Allen wrench for most of the screws on this lathe, especially the belt tensioner, and a small Allen wrench which only seems to fit the set screw on the headstock handwheel. Interestingly, the tailstock handwheel handle attaches with a flathead screwdriver that is not included. In addition to the tools, it includes an MT2 size drive center for the headstock and a small MT2 size live center for the tailstock. One of the reasons I got this lathe in particular is that it was the smallest, cheapest wood lathe I could find that used the MT2 sized Morse tapers in the head and tailstock, which means I can use the same MT2 size drill chuck I already have. The tailstock on this lathe appears to be sturdy with very little if any slop in the components. The metal clamping mechanism feels robust, but the plastic lock handle feels like it's going to break. Also, inconveniently, both controls are on the back side of the tailstock. The 6 inch tool rest also appears to be very sturdy and can be adjusted in quite a few different ways. Again, the metal clamp mechanism feels solid, but the plastic lock handle doesn't quite scream quality. The removable 3 inch faceplate is true to size and still allows use of the MT2 drive center when installed. Furthermore, the alignment of the centers seem to be extremely close between the headstock and the tailstock. This is a fixed speed motor with 5 different pulley ratios between 760 and 3200 RPMs. Access to the lower pulley is done by swinging a very cheap feeling plastic door out of the way, which thankfully doesn't have to do much more than keep hands or tools from accidentally getting tangled in the belt. The top pulley is accessed by a similarly cheap door inconveniently placed on the back of the headstock, and the two pulleys are connected by a unique inside out timing belt with a ribbed backside. Again, it's a good thing these covers don't have to do very much. The belt tension adjuster is probably equal parts convenient to reach and the least used part of this lathe, but adjustments can be made simply by loosening the screw and moving the lever up or down to loosen or tighten the belt respectively. The on-off switch is one of the safety keyed varieties which is nice if you don't want anyone else to use the lathe, but my main complaint is that when turned on, the switch has a pretty small target for emergency stops. So as long as you never make a mistake, it should be fine. The ways appears to be both smooth and flat and both the tailstock and tool rest move nicely. This lathe can't be described as a no-frills tool as it does come with a nice trim cover for the end of the base if you're not using the optional extension. It's only plastic, but does a good job of capping off the end of the base and offers a nice finished look. The size is accurate and has the full height available with nearly the entire 18 inches of usable length. As for the downsides of this lathe in terms of initial quality, I noticed the headstock side of the tailstock handwheel is showing some corrosion and the chrome plating is already chipping off. And while I don't expect this to affect the functionality of the tailstock, I also don't expect the hand wheel to remain shiny for very long either. And just as I was about to say this lathe isn't as terrible as it could have been, I noticed a crack in the cast base on the headstock side. Who knows if this will cause problems in the future, but it's definitely not a good thing. In addition to the lathe itself, I also ordered a full face shield. Wood lathes throw a lot of wood chips back at the operator and safety squints aren't going to cut it here so one of these are nice to have. And by the way, I'll link this in the description if anyone is interested. Finally, I picked up what seemed to be a halfway decent set of high speed steel tools since this lathe would be just about useless without them. They come in a nice wood box and have a variety of different shapes, most of which I don't know how to use yet, but include some round, some pointy, some chiseled, and some curved. They are also in clean condition without any surface rust and have a nice looking brass trim piece with nice wood handles.
Overall, they have a good feel to them and appear to be somewhat sharp right out of the box. I'll also be linking these in the description as well. Now it's time to go find a piece of wood that I can turn into smaller pieces of wood. This lathe is really quiet when it's running, and I noticed that the tailstock clamp has to be really tight to prevent it from sliding back when tightening it against the piece. I'm also using the large curved tool at this point. I also noticed that while the lathe doesn't stop spinning, it's not hard to stop the piece with the tool. This is probably due to the very rough surface of the wood, so light cuts are needed until the piece has been turned enough that they can be continuous cuts. This lathe is doing quite a nice job and at this point I decided to try a couple of the other tools. Finally, I was curious how the grain of this wood looks and the oil I ordered didn't come in yet so I used a bit of WD-40 to finish the wood a little. All in all, this lathe was hugely successful at turning an ugly piece of wood into something really nice looking. 
There are a few sandpaper marks that some finer sandpaper would take care of rather quickly, but other than that, this part of the wood would probably make a really nice handle for something in another video. That's it for this unboxing and review of a cheap wood lathe. It is linked in the description if anyone is interested, and I hope you enjoyed this review. I think this will be a pretty cool addition to the shop, and will allow me to start making round things out of both metal and wood. If you thought this was useful, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already and interested to see the things I turn out of wood, please leave a comment if you have any thoughts or suggestions, and as always, thanks so much for watching.